The bridges are made of three parts, the two sides and the bottom panel. Each part is constructed individually and then assembled at the end. Begin by constructing the two sides. Use small dabs of hot glue at the joints and then press firmly to make strong bonds with the hot glue. Encourage students to build their bridges with precision. A bridge with many imperfections will not hold as much weight as a bridge that is built following a consistent pattern. If there's time, students can strengthen their bridge by elaborating upon their original design. Unlike the two sides of the bridge, the bottom section has a rectangular frame. The bottom of the bridge is finished, but as it is, it's kind of flimsy and flexible. So if your student has time, encourage them to reinforce it with more cross beams or even trusses. All three parts of the bridge are finished, so the next step is to assemble them. Bring the two sides of the bridge together on top of the bottom section to create a prism shape. Use the cable ties to bind the three sections together, beginning with the corners. Cable ties work well for this project because it's almost impossible to open them back up once it's been closed. The bridge is basically complete. The final step before weight testing is to trim off all the extra cable tie ends to make it look good. Use two desks or tables to support the ends of the bridge, leaving space under the bridge to hang the scale. Take the length of nylon cord and put it through both ends of the bridge so that it forms a loop. This will help distribute weight more evenly than if we hang the scale from a single point. Use a carbine hook or other implement to hang the scale from the nylon rope. You or the students can lean on the handle, which simulates a load that the bridge is carrying. Look out for signs of breakage, like bending popsicle sticks or the sound of wood beginning to crack. If a bridge does break, it's usually just one or two popsicle sticks or hot glue bonds that have broken. It's pretty easy to fix.